At last, inside a Premiere Pro beta, you can now start testing the Generative Extend tool. What the heck is Generative Extend? It's powered by Adobe Firefly, which is Adobe's generative AI tool that will essentially allow you to use the tool to extend the clip to essentially cover a gap if there's missing information, smooth out a transition, or just hold on a clip for longer because you need it to match the beat. Better yet, you can also extend audio. Have you ever forgotten to record room tone? You can now use Generative Extend for that. So I'm very excited to show you how it works. So let's go ahead and jump on in. Before we start, I want to talk about a few limitations because remember, this is still in beta. As of right now, in terms of resolution, we are limited to 1080p and 720p in the landscape format for now. I did try it on a vertical video in 1080p and it did not work. I also tried it out on 4K UHD footage just to test. And I also got an error message saying that it doesn't work in that resolution yet. As of now, you can only extend video clips by two seconds and audio clips by 10 seconds. And you cannot, of course, extend music. Also to extend audio clips, it needs to be at least three seconds long. If you try to extend an audio clip that's any shorter than three seconds, you will get this error message saying there needs to be three seconds of data for it to work with. So those are the current limitations that I found currently inside of beta, but now let's go in to try out some use cases. So for the first use case, we're going to test extending a video clip to match the end of a video. So it perfectly ends with the music. So you can see here, I actually have this moving storyboard that I actually generated with Adobe Firefly's text to video tools, which is currently in beta. So if you wanna watch that video, you can check that out after this one. And you'll see here that this last clip actually has text, but it kind of ends abruptly here and the music continues on a little bit. So I wanna extend this last clip here. So let's go ahead and let's zoom into the timeline. Let's go up here to the generative extend tool. Once you have that selected, you can select the end of this clip and drag it out and you can see that it actually stops at two seconds. I can't actually extend this anymore. And I let go and it starts to prepare and upload and then it starts to generate an extension for you. So it takes about 20 to 30 seconds to complete. Sometimes it's a little bit faster and you can watch that progress bar right next to the word generating to get an update on its status. All right, it looks pretty nice here. And just like with any other clip, you can right click on it and apply a default transition. So that way it just fades out, which is nice. I did notice a slight shift in color. If we go to the frame before it's AI generated and go here, it looks a little bit lighter, but you'll notice that the part that's AI generated is labeled AI generated. And if you right click on that, you can click on generate again if it just didn't turn out great because each generation will be a little bit different. You can also leave feedback if it was a good output or a poor output. For example, if you select poor output, you can go and give further information on what happened and that will be submitted to the Premiere Pro Firefly team, which is great. So definitely give feedback because it's only gonna improve the tool and how it works. One thing that I would like to see is being able to right click on this AI generated portion and just deleting it. Because of course you can control Z and command Z to undo it. Let's say you start editing and then you forget, oh, actually I wanna delete that generation. I don't want it there anymore. It's more difficult to delete it, right? Because you can't right click and just delete it. Now you might be wondering where are these generated clips existing? Well, when you generate things, it actually creates a folder in your project panel called generated media. So you can always go in here and delete any of these extensions. Also, you might be wondering where is it located on your computer? If you right click on any of the media that you generated and go to reveal in finder inside of the same folder that you saved your project, you will see here that there's a generative assets folder that has all these generative extensions saved to it. So it's not in like a random documents folder, which I love. I'm glad that they came up with this. So this was extending essentially a stock video clip, right? What about human faces? I took a sample clip here from a previous video and you can see that I already extended it and I also extended the audio too. It has AI generated, AI generated. So let's just have a look here and see if you can see the difference. Creative Console by Logitech. 
and you can see the same thing kind of happens with the light. So here it's a little bit darker and then here it gets a little bit brighter as soon as we get into the generation. So I'm not quite sure why that's happening, but I would hope that this would be fixed so it's more consistent. So you can see here that it's pretty much just repeating the same action of the last frame, which is me smiling. And that's what we want because we don't want me all of a sudden dancing or doing some freaky smile as soon as we extend it, right? They actually simplified this generation model to really just extend the action from that last frame. Let's talk about extending clips for a transition. If you've used Premiere Pro for a while, you probably have gotten an error message at some point that said that there's insufficient media when you're trying to apply a built-in Premiere Pro transition or a plug-in transition between two clips when there's not enough information. And you press okay, and then you get these kind of striped bars here, and it's repeating frames here. And that's because if we delete this transition, you will see that actually there's no more information if I try to drag out this clip here. For this one, let's say I want it to be this length, but I want it to be a little bit longer so I can have it work for the transition that I'm trying to do. So what I can do is just move this clip over just to give it enough space for the extension, then go to generative extend and extend out this clip two seconds and it will start to generate an extension just like it did before. All right, so the generation looks fine. It looks like an exact extension of our clip, so no worries there. But remember that you cannot apply the transition at the very end of this generation because you're going to get that same error message of insufficient media. So I recommend actually rolling in this generation just by pushing it in so you have a little bit of information to work with with that transition that we didn't have before. So we can bring in our other clip and then I can take the grunge impact and apply it on these clips and we do not get that error message. So I've moved over to a more advanced version of this transition here and let's talk about extending audio. You can see I've added some sound effects. Notice right here, the room tone ends. And this can happen for a lot of people. Of course, you can duplicate the room tone. That's one way of doing it. But what if you just want to extend it out using generative extend? So let's go up to generative extend and let's drag the end of this room tone and roll it out to meet the end of our video clip. Now remember, right now it only works up to 10 seconds. I think it sounds just fine. Another thing, if we zoom in here, you can see I've cut up these different typing sounds to match her stroke movements. In doing that, created these gaps. So you can use this generative extend to fill in those gaps so you don't have a drop in kind of the room tone that was recorded when that sound effects was being recorded initially. worked pretty nicely, but it doesn't always work. For example, here, I tried to extend this ambience track of inside of a boat. Let's listen back to hear what happened. So it kind of goes in and out. It didn't replicate the sound perfectly. And I think it got confused because really, if you look at this waveform here, it's kind of a rolling sound. It kind of goes up and then down again. And I don't think that the generative extend is really designed to do that. I think it's designed to literally mimic the last three seconds of that sound and kind of keep it consistent. And it just didn't know what to do here. So if we can get generative extension to work with these types of sound effects, that would be great. But for now, it just didn't do the job. If this was a good introduction into generative extend for you, be sure to give this video a thumbs up as well as drop a magic emoji down below in the comment section. Now I know there's so many different things you guys wanna see inside of Premiere Pro. 
me as well. And trust me, I'm gonna keep you on the loop on everything that's going on, and I will pass on any feedback that I can to the Adobe Premiere Pro team. But leave your comments below and your feedback because they are watching these videos. I do know that a lot of you on my previous video commented that they would love to see different things that AI could do to speed up their workflow. I think somebody wrote that, you know, if AI can generate a bunch of tennis balls, why can't it just animate a photo for me automatically with an ease in, ease out? That's a great point. I think it's really good to start these conversations, leave comments. I think that's how things get developed. So anyway, thank you so much for watching this video. And as always, keep creating better video with Gal. See you next time. Bye. Ooh.